Here is how we first perceive and then interpret color. Hi, my name is Remy Abdul. I'm a licensed painter, color consultant, owner of Expressions Painting, and founder of Expressions Painting University. Last week, we discussed how color really is a frequency that is generating from this electromagnetic field that we call light. So if you haven't already watched that video, I'd certainly recommend that you do so that you can then take that information and be involved in this discussion where we go one step further. So to really fully understand the, the, the idea. But what we're talking about is that that frequency that is reflecting from an object is first detected or perceived, whatever you'd want to call it, from our eye, right? And in the back of our eyes, we have rod cells and cone cells, which together, they, they interpret the information that they receive with the frequency and then make determinations of the color of it, right? And the, the cone cells are really there to determine the color and then the rod cells, those are the photoreceptors, they're really there to really step in in case of low light, right? And in those cases, it's really about creating contrast so that we can see in low light where there's usually not uh, much that we could see, right? So that's you know how we were built to make it so that we can see in the dark or close or low light environment, right? But in those situations, the cone cells are really muted down to really make way for the rod cells. So that's why we don't perceive color in low light environment or very little, right? So that's the first step is the, inter uh, the perceiving of those frequencies that are out there in that energy field. But then after that, this is where the magic happens and this is where a lot of weird things can happen is that our mind, our brain then takes that information and interprets that information, right? And so this is where you sometimes will see something or two people really can watch the exact same thing but interpret different outcomes, right? Because this is dependent on the information that the brain has and where we're all individual people we all have different information regarding what we're seeing because we may have a wider context, uh, more information, uh, which allows our brain to make different interpretations, right? And I witnessed this firsthand a couple weeks ago when I was at my parents' place for a few days painting their house. And so in, my, in their house, there's this big tree, a decorative tree that was moved into the middle of the, the kitchen for you know, making sure that I could paint the walls, right? But I remember I was done the painting and I was sitting, uh, I was near the, the kitchen sink and then I just happened to turn into towards the living room and I'll put the image here. But that tree was blocking the, the left side of, the, of, of the, the wall there. And what I'm here to, what I, where I'm getting at is that in her house, in my parents' house, I've painted two different shades of gray, one substantially darker and the other one quite light. But in this image, if you look at this particular image, the brain would normally swear that the lighter color is the one that's on top, whereas in reality, it's the opposite. And so that's because in that moment where the tree was blocking the left side, the brain only had so much information of you know, perceiving the frequencies that were coming, and then it made conclusions. And in that instance, I remember looking, whoa, <laughs> it looks like the colors were opposite. But if you look at the full picture with more information, like this picture here, it's quite clear that the back wall is the darker wall, and then the little half wall is the lighter color. But where there was more light coming in on the back wall in the original picture, it made that color very diluted because there was so much light coming back, right? So it's, it's very interesting to see how the brain works in that way. And I'm a very uh, spiritual person. I like to kind of go deep in discussions. And when I look at how we interpret color and then with the information, and that, that really tells me that really this is how we view life in general, right? So think about how sometimes we'll have limited information drawing conclusions, not necessarily on what we see in terms of frequency, but what we hear and then make up in our minds. 
Whereas all of a sudden we get a new piece of information and the whole story we had in our mind changes because of that. Same concept applies, right? So in, the, in terms of looking at color, it all depends on how much information that we have to draw those interpretations. And a famous example is that famous dress that was going around on social media a couple of years back where some people were seeing it white and gold, whereas others were seeing it blue and brown. Well, this is precisely the reason is because with that, the fact that that image was so cropped and there was limited information, it wasn't clear if that dress was near an outside or like a showroom window where it was illuminated by the outside of the sunlight or if it was in the middle of a room lit by the artificial light inside that room. And depending on if that light source were more of a yellowish or a bluish nature, it could interpret that dress to be either one of those colors, right? So this is one of those rare examples that creates such a great difference in interpretations, but it just goes to show that it's not just about what is actually there, but it's how we interpret, and it's all based on the information we have. Did you get value in this video? I'm certainly hoping that you did. I am on a mission to simplify color and to remove some of the frustration that homeowners experience in a lot of cases because knowledge, and this is the fear part, right? We, we, we fear what we don't understand. So my mission is kind of bring, is to bring a layer of understanding in the complexity of color to then demystify the process and to simplify and to make it more so that you can get to those right colors without as many false tries or mistakes or, or attempts, right? So I want to help get you there faster because the thing about it is that when you have the right color in your house and if you make the conclusions, color is a frequency, right? the right frequency surrounding you makes a world of difference. And we're gonna to touch much further on this in next week's video as we talk about the geometry inside the color wheel. This is a fascinating topic and I'm sh I hope that you'll join me again next week to go even deeper in this, this scientific, <laughs> so to speak, discussion about color. And in the meantime, if you are ready to change those colors, and you're living in the greater Moncton area, please reach out to me and Gino. It would be our pleasure to help you change those colors, so to help you change your life. And if you're a painter, contractor, or consultant worldwide, this is what we teach. This is the kind of information that we want to arm you with so that you can then be in a better position to help your homeowners get to those right colors. So I'd encourage you to visit Expressions Painting University and be sure to sign up for our weekly tips and tricks to get more uh, videos like these. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.